Christmas on the world's most expensive cruise ship. It's Christmas! A very warm welcome on board the most luxurious ship ever built. At £8,000 a night for the top suite. This is the most luxurious address at sea. It offers elite travellers the ultimate festive holiday. I love to see the ship all decorated. There's a Christmas tree in every room. I love Christmas. Who doesn't love Christmas? We go behind the scenes to reveal the secrets of this floating Christmas wonderland. Oh la la, that's the baby. Could you please come to the gangway? Tiff, Tiff! What does it take to create the perfect festive cruise? You just need to turn one second and something will happen, so you need always to have eyes everywhere. But is it all plain sailing? Oops, all these doors are full of fingerprints. Can we start moving now, sure. please? Can staff cope with the pressure? Carefully, guys. <laughs> Don't break it. Yeah, I'm a bit nervous. So come on board. Then you follow me. As we discover... Oh, my. I've never seen anything like this in all my life. This is Christmas. If it really is the most magical time of the year. <laughs> Oh, my God. Oh, oh Jesus, Mary and Cherry. The world's most expensive cruise ship is moored in Miami. Preparing to set sail on a Christmas cruise around the Caribbean. Ahead of this festive voyage, the ship is loaded with 3,000 bottles of champagne, 350 kilos of foie gras, and hundreds of Christmas puddings. And also back on board after a three-month break is cruise director John. Oh. It's Christmas! Who's adding some finishing touches to the newly installed 14-foot Christmas tree in the atrium. It's funny because my wife decorates that she doesn't let me touch the tree at home, so this is the only chance I get. I just drink at home. Since John's last voyage, the £350 million ship has had a festive facelift. The miles of marble corridor have been spruced up with 15 Christmas trees, 1,000 designer decorations, and over 100 festive flower arrangements. There's something about a Caribbean kind of Christmas in the sun, which is really special. Everyone seems to really enjoy it, and you get the beauty of the six-star food and drink. Christmas on the Explorer is really quite magical. Might have to polish my balls later. <laughs> Upstairs, the £8,000 a night region suite has also been given a Christmas makeover. Just be standby, I will call you back. In charge is head butler Ronnie who's making sure the suite's finest tableware is ready. This is the petit four stand, and this is costing around $1,200. Then we have the lovely show plates. These are gold-plated. This is $2,800. And we have something small, salt and pepper. This is $600. Designed for the ship's elite, Ronnie hopes the Regent Suite is the place for the ultimate high-end Christmas. You can say this is the most luxurious address at sea. How about opening your presents at the foot of a 120,000 pound bed? You have the Malissimo duvet. This is made with Icelandic bird fur. So it takes years to make one duvet. Duvet is around 7,000 euros. Eaten too much? Why not relax in a spa adorned with gold? And don't worry about the red wine staining your teeth. This is a teeth whitening device. And this is to whiten your teeth so you don't have to go to the dentist. Finish the evening off with a sing-along beside the £350,000 Steinway piano. Just trying to make sure everything is perfect and there are no fingerprints on the piano. Decked out with the most expensive items, the pressure is on to deliver an unforgettable Christmas. Every guest is different from the previous one that we had. They expect the best, and we are here to cater to their needs. Everything has to go perfect. As 
700 guests finally begin to board... Welcome on board. Welcome on board. Good morning. General Manager Andreas is there to greet them. The suites will be ready around 2 o'clock. From Venice, fastidious Andreas is in charge of the day-to-day -day running of the ship. The straight. And he's not afraid to crack the whip. Pitchy, the orchids by the uh, champagne table by the entrance uh, they don't look very fresh. Do we have better, better? OK, all right. Uh, if, if we can do that now, yeah, let's call them to the elevator. Every detail has to be right. Many of our guests are repeaters and have been with us many, many times. And uh, it's like to have a Christmas with the family. In the hidden world below deck, Ooh. Italian food and beverage director Roberto is checking the Christmas provisions are all in order. You know, in Italy, there is no Christmas without panetto. Eh? Mm. This, is a, this is a beautiful baby, yeah. I need to smell it. Okay. Uh, morning. Oh, yeah. smell it. Okay. Alongside executive head chef Michael, Roberto's getting a sneak preview of his favorite foods. So we have enough. Let's go. And he seems to be in a rush to get to the cheese store. I love cheese. cheese right? Oh, chef doesn't allow me to come very often here. So when I come, I, I enjoy it. See, seeing that, beautiful, huh? Mamma mia, it's a bomb. The cheese lovers on board, the explorer has over 50 of the world's finest. Yeah, almost double the order. And over the Christmas period, they get through double their usual amount. Mm. Although that might just be to satisfy Roberto. Mm. <laughs> Why everything is good is not healthy. <laughs> There's certainly no chance of running out of this one. Here you go. Mm. Oh. The king. <laughs> this wheel of Parmesan weighs 40 kilograms and costs a cool 1,000 pounds. And this is coming from Italy. <laughs> I love it. At Christmas, it's not just cheese they need to order more of. In the luxury food store, there's around 60,000 pounds worth of foie gras and caviar. Oh la la, what is the spoon? Okay. <laughs> okay. And just to test it's truly fresh, Roberto's conveniently found a spoon. Now, this is a test. Okay, so you, go okay. Ahead, you go ahead. Put down. Mm. Super fresh. Yeah, yeah. I huh? love it. Huh? Fantastic. To burn off the calories, Roberto can always use the turkeys. How many? Oh la la. That's the baby. Huh? Mm -hmm. Chef, how many pounds is this one? This one is 30, 30 pounds turkey. 30 yeah. pounds? 30. Yeah. And uh, we will need it about uh, for Christmas Day. We will yeah. use it for Christmas Day in all avenue. And we'll use it about 20 turkeys, I would say, yeah. The Explorer will serve around 450 kilograms of turkey and goose at Christmas. Plenty to go round. So we have enough. We can do Christmas. Back upstairs. Good afternoon. How are you? John's in the festive mood. Happy holidays, Elvis. As he starts an impromptu Christmas sing-along with waiter Elvis. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Come on, Elvis. He's a star. <laughs> Almost half the guests are now on board, but Andreas has just spotted the most important of the lot. And in the Regent Suite, Ronnie receives the phone call he's been waiting for. All right, perfect. I will go and pick up the guest now. You have to leave the suite now. You have to leave the suite. There's a shooting happening. Go out. The ship's VIPs have arrived. Samuel, I'm heading down. Will you please come to the gangway. We have the Regent Suite arriving. They are from 1400 and 1001. You can dig down. Spending 10 days in the elite region suite are Mary Jean Tully and her husband Brad. Uh, general manager on board. Hi. Thank you so much. Nice to be here. Thank you. It's beautiful. 
Hello, my name is Mr. Tully. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Tully. Nice to meet you. Good. This is my husband, Brad. Nice to meet you, Brad. Nice to see you around. Oh, you definitely will. Well, maybe not. We're in that cabin. Who knows? You'll have to come visit us. I'll come visit you. Okay, cool. CEO of one of the world's leading luxury travel agencies, Mary Jean has been named one of the most powerful women in travel. Will her suite live up to its reputation? Are you ready for the surprise? I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to your suite. Wow. <laughs> wow, this is amazing. It's absolutely stunning. Absolutely. The attention to detail, everything. Look at this. And this suite is 4,400 square feet. Bigger than our house. Yes. Actually, it's about the same size as our house. Yes. Wow. So, what's the verdict for luxury travel expert Mary Jean? Not too shabby at all, that's for sure. To me, if somebody didn't like this, something's seriously wrong with them. Well, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome on board the most luxurious ship ever built. Seven Seas Explorer. It gives me great pleasure to announce that the suites are ready, so you can make your way to your suites from this point onwards. With the 375 suites now ready and all the guests on board, the festive cruise can set sail. I love having Christmas in the sun. <laughs> no snow, no ice, <laughs> so it's awesome. At home, it's cold and wet. But out here, it's beautiful, sunny weather, and you come back on the ship, and you've got all these decorations, and you think, oh my God, it's mad. <laughs> so I love to see the ship all decorated, and it's, it's beautiful. I love Christmas. Who doesn't love Christmas? The Seven Seas Explorer weighs anchor and departs for the Cayman Islands, Mexico, and Belize. As the evening draws in, up on the top deck is the traditional sail away party. There's something about the sail away party though, isn't there? Just it's to, really great. you have to do it. For staff, this is where the hard work starts. And if you have any problems, come and tell me and I'll... Will the world's most expensive cruise ship deliver a six star Christmas? It's Christmas on board the world's most expensive cruise ship. Behind the scenes, 550 staff are working around the clock to make it the most spectacular Christmas ever for their 700 guests. Don't break it. Please, how are you? And how is the Christmas tree you like? Oh, the Christmas trees? Oh, we love it. After an overnight sail from Miami, the Seven Seas Explorer has arrived at its first destination. Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to our first port of call this cruise, Georgetown in the Cayman Islands. But with no port big enough for the cruise ship, it's time to deploy the explorer's tender boats. It's a big operation luring them off the ship and making it safe to ferry hundreds of guests back and forth including John. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's lovely. Thank you. Today, he's hosting one of the most sought-after excursions, a boat trip to a shallow sandbar about a mile off the coast, where he'll have a chance to swim with Grand Cayman's world-famous stingrays. But he's feeling a bit anxious about it. Got my trunks on, yeah? I've got two pairs, just in case. <laughs> After all, they are wild animals with a venomous barb on their tails, which they use in self-defense. You've just got the briefing. You can't touch the, the back end of the stingray, apparently. You can't follow it, otherwise you could end up impaling yourself on something very, rather sharp. Hmm. So... You go down backwards or forwards? How will John survive in the water? I think I've got butterflies in my stomach regarding the whole thing, to be honest with you. Back on board, the hard work continues. For general manager Andreas... This is a, in a very expensive floor, is a leather floor. It's the perfect opportunity to take one of his notorious ship inspections. 
Every day I take a walk around. You just need to turn one second and something will happen. So you need always to have eyes everywhere and be everywhere all the time. And being everywhere is what Andreas does best. He's a man so fixated with detail that nothing can escape his gaze. Yeah, all these doors are full of fingerprints. When I'm home, I'm driving my wife crazy because uh, I look after all these details and uh, really, she, sometimes she gets upset on me. <laughs> For Andreas, standards are everything. Yeah, here there is uh, one black cushion missing. Oh, here it is. But accidents do happen. Oh, madame, everything okay? Yes, just fine. Oh, did you, did you hurt yourself? No. All no, right, we I will hurt the plant. Oh, no problem, we will replace it. So what's Andreas's verdict on the ship? Looks beautiful because I already did a walk this morning. <laughs> My toupee is going to come off. Back at the excursion... I don't like it. <laughs> John's about to swim with southern stingrays, which can grow to be five feet wide. There's two down there. If stepped on, their serrated barb might cause a nasty shock. Please. But while the guests are embracing this bucket list moment... Brilliant! Brilliant! So glad I did it! John isn't so sure. I got my mask on. It felt like a hundred stingrays underneath me and I just didn't want to put my feet down. So I, I just kind of went in the fetal position. <laughs> Jumping left, right, and centre. <laughs> I keep <kept> going. <laughs> As John makes his way back to the Explorer, on board there's action of a different kind. Head bartender and cocktail trickster extraordinaire Catalin is certainly in the Christmas spirit. but he's now got to face his boss, food and beverage director Roberto, who wants him to create a special festive cocktail for the Christmas menu. Bartender guess is a very close relation, so you need to trust the bartender, he has to do the drink, and he has to understand exactly what I'm looking for. Maybe one ounce. So what does make a cocktail Christmassy? We will choose one only. First up, a blend of premium Kentucky bourbon and raspberry liqueur. But there's something missing. This is too red. If you can add some green here, it will be, will be great. To give more the wow effect, because the drinks, the color from here is amazing. I love the rosemary because it's giving something. Christmas tree, right? You agree? Definitely. Let's, let's go one tone up now. Huh? The second one is a creamier affair. One ounce of vodka. With vodka and creme de menthe, and a bit of chocolate flair on the glass. Ah. And yet, once again, Roberto wants something extra. If we put a, a, a bomb chocolate uh, bowl inside, that is, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, not sinking, it's floating. Right. Here. If it's, if it's floating... Oh. Mm. What would I do, actually? Yeah. Does that mean he likes it? or not. The last cocktail is a mix of infused gin, passion fruit, and a spicy pineapple syrup. Mm. Mm. He's calling me. <laughs> they all look the part, but what about the all-important taste? and created a Christmas cocktail fit for the explorer. So what's the verdict, Roberto? I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I will choose between this one and this one. This is more elegant, you know, it depends from the, the, the I don't know, this is uh, not, I like both. The taste, the, 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 how they are prepared, the decoration. So I cannot uh, say no to this one. I love that one, I cannot say no, so both. Both. Okay. So it's strange. Yeah? Choice, yeah. We find excellent two choice. on three, it's, uh, it's good. It's That's good. an excellent good. choice. Good job. <laughs> it looks like they'll be adding two new cocktails to the Christmas menu.
Any special cocktails you've enjoyed? <gasps> Ooh, yeah. quite a lot. Margaritas. <laughs> Well, let me say this. Her blood test came back with an olive in it. <laughs> Next slide. slide. Mm -hmm. Pina coladas. Yeah. You keep going. I've She's... got to police myself like a lunatic. Yeah. I haven't gone through all our list yet. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to avoid We've got that. a few days to go. One man who was desperate to be on the Christmas cruise is boutique salesman Andre. London to the Topaz. We have diamonds. It's just so interesting. Well, uh, let's be frank enough, as a salesman, I requested to be on the ship during the holiday season. Diamonds over here. I love what I do, I love my job, but at the same time, of course, I have my family back home and I'm across on the other part of the globe for a reason. He's hoping there are plenty of wealthy guests potentially looking for some last minute gifts. I think this is this time of the year when everyone is in a great mood and, you know, People want to express their love to each other. And jewelry is one of the great ways to express your love and feelings of attraction to each other, you know. Here we go. I think it's beautiful. There's some serious money to be made, and Andre has targets to hit. It's high. <laughs> well, the sky is the limit. That looks really nice. <laughs> you like it, get it. You will really enjoy it. There is always a challenge, but I never make my challenge look hard. It's a good job the most exclusive shop at sea is home to over three million pounds worth of bespoke high-end jewelry. I've seen them on a few ladies, but on you they do, do look great. It's your hair color. I think you have as well a golden kind of tone. Will Andre make a sale? Very special. Like the... This is stunning. This is stunning. Go for it. Nice uh, really nice. I think about it. Okay. Looks like Andre's out of luck on this occasion. Mm-hmm. Will he be able to get the sales to make it a good Christmas? The world's most expensive cruise ship is three days into its Christmas voyage around the Caribbean Sea. The next port of call are the islands around Belize, just south of Mexico. Christmas time is a hive of activity all over the ship. But topping the bill in the kitchen are the sweet treats. Christmas is all about sweets and cookies. Yeah, cookies, Jew logs, Christmas logs, all these kind of items. Herman is the ship's pastry chef, in charge of every single sugary Christmas creation. Yeah, you can see, never trust a skinny cook, and pastry chefs also, all the sweets we, we have to try. But it's not edible Santa Claus or baked Alaska ice cream on the agenda for today. Then you follow me. This morning, Herman is putting away his pastry brush, rolling up his sleeves and doing a spot of building work. He's constructing a whole gingerbread village made up of 22 houses and 75 figurines. As you can see now, it got nice firm, beautiful color. No detail is too small for Herman's festive neighborhood. Meringue fondant icicles, candy cane windowsills, and each house gets a festive visitor. Two weeks before we even start, I start already planning the whole process. That on the day, it's like a military execution, that there's no delay. The gingerbread village is part of a spectacular display for the end of the cruise. The expectations are the highest. Now you must be spot on, has to be tip top, you cannot do mistakes. This is not possible. The passengers also, they expect they pay a lot of money. And sure, we have to deliver a first class product. Above deck, the Seven Seas Explorer has arrived at the island of Harvest Key. Just off the coast of Belize, the 75 acre slice of paradise is owned exclusively by the cruise company. Bought and developed at a cost of $50 million, the only way of setting foot here is by being a cruise passenger. Whilst the guests relax on the pristine seven-acre beach, cruise director John is here on business. Hoping the weather holds out here. Some dark clouds over there. He's been tasked with testing out a nerve-shredding new activity for future cruises. Okay. Oh, man. oh my God. 
the island's 1,300-foot-long zipline. <sighs> My life! But will it be deemed suitable for the explorer's guests? To find out, today, John is the guinea pig. I'm glad they picked me to go and test out this tour anyway. John makes his way to the 136-foot-high launch platform. My heart is like... Should have gone to the loo. Should have gone to the loo. Oh, God. I don't... Um... Oh, well, it's too late now. Can I just check the wires, though, just to make sure that I'm on? Oh, my God. Oh, God! Am I extrapped in? Are you sure? You just gave me a wedgie! Are you going to do like one, two, th oh, sh thanks. Oh, my God. We're heading towards a palm tree. Oh, there's some guests. Hello. Oh, there's the general manager. Hello. This is wicked. Oh, Jesus, Mary and Joseph. <laughs> oh my God, that's wicked. You feel like you're actually flying? I, I want to do more extreme sports now. Definitely. Bungee jumping next time. Safe to say the zip line was a hit with John. But how does it rate as a new activity for the crew's guests? It's an amazing uh, shore excursion. And it's an amazing private island too, because there was not no lines. You just walk straight on. So. It's like a real... It's good to have a private island, isn't it? I'm going again. While John's flying high, in the boutique, Andre is beavering away to meet his Christmas sales target. And today, he might just be about to strike gold. So over here we have our beautiful circle of love necklace. I think it's the most extraordinary piece in here. I think everyone is drooling about this piece and I would recommend to try it on. Please. Mary Jean, guest in the 8,000 pound a night region suite, has popped in for a browse. This is just breathtaking. Oh, it is. This is you. Very, very limited edition. We created only 10 of them in the whole world. Why do I have such good taste? <laughs> you do have fantastic taste. You've chosen the most beautiful piece I have. This blue topaz and diamond bejeweled necklace, worth a cool 19,000 pounds, has caught Mary Jean's eye. Look how it sparkles as well. You can see all these baguettes and the diamonds. Time to turn on the charm. First of all, this is an artwork, it you is. know? It's it's, it's an artwork in a fine jewelry. A lot of charm. I totally think you should have it. It's perfect for you. <laughs> it is an artwork made with actual gemstones, gold and diamonds. Well, it is Christmas and I'm having a Christmas party. Perfect. Suite, and I already <laughs> know the dress that I'm wearing and this would be Absolutely perfect for it. I think so. So congratulations then. Thank you, I'll take it for sure. Thank you. With Mary Jean's 19,000 pound purchase, Christmas has come early for Andre. Pleasure. Merry Christmas to me. Merry Christmas to you. Christmas. Wear it in a good health. Thank Enjoy so sparkle, much. shine and collect. Mucho compliments. Thank you so much. <laughs> <Thank> uh. you. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst Andre celebrates his sale, down below deck, there's no let up in the kitchen, especially at Christmas. Trainee executive chef Jose has a nerve wracking afternoon ahead. He's been given the chance to prepare this year's Christmas dinner roast goose with prunes and armagnac. When it comes to Christmas, the expectation becomes so high. Why? Because at the end of the day, the guests really want to make a memorable evening. He is completely different, he's totally special. To ensure it's up to region standard, Jose is doing a trial run for head chef Michael. Getting ready for dinner? All ready for dinner? Getting ready for dinner? Okay, let's go. Get it on, get it on. It's a golden opportunity to show his cooking prowess and impress his boss. He has a lot of experience. He's been in the business for quite a long time. 
So hopefully I'm gonna I'm gonna be able to achieve his expectations. First, Jose checks the goose, All right. which has been slowly roasting for three hours. All right, it looks great. I have to say, nice, shiny, golden brown. That is beautiful. Next up, potato dumplings sautéed in a sage butter. Once the butter is already melted and the sage is starting to get a little bit golden brown, you add the potato dumplings. Yeah, that's what we would like. Last, the all-important red wine gravy. All the juice from the goose is being collected on the side and it's been reduced with wine. And we added a little bit of the juice from the prunes as well. So we have it here. One of the biggest moments of cooking goose is it cannot be dry, cannot be overcooked, but as well, it has to fall apart, the meat from the bones. Now, here we go. It's a very moist. Now you can see it. the meat is falling off out of the bone, but it's still, it's very juicy, very moist. We use all the goose, the legs, crispiness from the skin, and we serve the breast as well, or the dumplings and the sauce. Here we go. That is one. Chef! Chef! What will Michael make of it? Just a little bit too thick, I would say. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How about we change it a little bit around? Yeah, so for sure. Ah, there's one thing we forgot, the prunes. Yeah? The very, prunes. Very so will it be good enough to serve to the guests for the Christmas banquet? The goose is super moist. Presentation is beautiful. So this is a winner, definitely a winner. Meanwhile, John has been served up some big news. VIP guest Mary Jean is throwing an exclusive Christmas party in the Regent Suite and wants him to be the star attraction. So I've just been invited by the Regent Suite to a cocktail party in two days' time. So we'll have to see if we can rally something together that uh, will be comfortable for me, but they'll enjoy as well. So there's always something. With not much time to prepare, John gets straight into rehearsals. He's used to performing with a seven-strong orchestra. But at this party, he'll just have pianist Ed as backup. Then I'm going to go, ladies and gentlemen, the Regent's signature. No, oh, they're not here. So we'll do Silent Night, Shepherd's Quake at the site, and then we'll just go back to Silent Night again. He's organised the set list. Sleep in heaven. Oh no, sorry, it's wrong, wrong. I really uh, should have breathed right in there. Hang on a minute. But he's having trouble learning the songs. Yay! Yay! I mean, it's a bugger of a song to learn. Yeah, that's nice. Silent night. It's like a one-off. I'm actually in a bit of trepidation about doing it, so it'll be, it'll be a few yeah. days of high anxiety, I'm sure. <laughs> Mr. Waters, you are a magician. He trained at Hogwarts. <laughs> the world's most expensive cruise ship is nearing the end of its Christmas journey, and a big night lies ahead. Mary Jean Tully, a guest in the £8,000 a night region suite, has requested an exclusive party with carols, canapes and cocktails. She's even splashed out £19,000 on a necklace for the occasion. It's a definitely a special Christmas present. My husband didn't realise it until we were in the shop. I said, Merry Christmas, honey. <laughs> Only a select few have received an invite. They have asked us to invite a certain number of guests so all the invitations have been sent across three days ago. So we already got the RSVP for around 20 guests. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. How are we all doing? Good evening. Fantastic. Okay. Ronnie has called in his team of 10 butlers to ensure the party is nothing less than perfect. Shiva is from India. Then we have Nishan. He is newly joined. 
of them are trained by a top English butler school for exactly this kind of occasion. You all have the layout? Yes. yes. Who's going to be standing where and doing what? Then we have a cruise director uh, coming as well, who will be singing a couple of songs. Ronnie will be hoping everything goes to plan. We are trying our best. Just like always, we will be spotless. And I'm sure my team will do it. OK, anything else? So we look forward for the lovely evening. Sure, thank you all. Thank you, thank you. In the galley, the kitchen staff have been hard at work preparing over 150 luxury canapes, including lobster with salmon roe and deviled eggs topped with beluga caviar. We almost set. With the Verve Clicquot on ice and the fresh Christmas poinsettias in place, Chef, we are coming to the galley to pick up the food for the region suite. Ronnie is ready. Hi, guys. OK. Slowly, huh? Don't spoil the garnish, please. Start. Can we start moving now, sure. please? Yeah. Slowly, guys. Carefully, guys. Come, come, come. With the canapé set and guests beginning to arrive, the exclusive Christmas party gets underway. Please open to champagne, Buff Clicquot. All they need now is the singer. We need music. Yeah. But John is nowhere to be seen. We need music, baby cakes. Yes, of course. Don't you think? Yes. Elsewhere on the ship, the final Christmas show of the cruise is in full swing. Uh, James, James. The other two also, this one. Outside the theatre, a surprise is being prepared. Yeah, yeah, OK, good, 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 good. Executive head chef Michael is organising the grand reveal of the gingerbread village. Where's the pastry chef? Come on. But his team are tight for time. Yes, right now, right now, yeah. It's just, uh, we just have to get the house up about an hour. Put it there, put it there. It's all hands on deck to get the display in tip-top shape before the guests spill out from the theatre. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go, my friend. Once the guests come out, it's gonna be, uh, you know, I just want them, I just want to wow them, yeah? With the, with the houses, yeah. We need to put a little bit on the other side, here. Yeah. It's very important for us. This is the last push for Christmas. No, no, the head, the head is gonna go. Though the display isn't without its casualties. Yeah, yeah. This one is broken already. Yeah, we have to do some touch-up, you know, and transporting, you can see on the side here. So it's, uh, it's, it's normal, it's normal. We will fix it, we got it's all made out of sugar. Oh, here we go. As over 600 guests pour out of the Constellation Theatre, will the gingerbread village impress? Good Lord. Oh my! <laughs> It's absolutely beautiful. I've never seen anything like this in all my life. This is Christmas. It's getting us all in the Christmas mood. When we saw them preparing it, we didn't know what they were for, but now we see it, and I think it's real cool. It's very beautiful. Yeah. The display has gone down a treat. Very Christmassy. Yeah. Now I am ready for Santa to come. <laughs> but thoughts soon turn to what will become of all the gingerbread. I'm hungry. <laughs> I really want to eat it, but I can't. This smells very tempting. We were hoping we could eat the gingerbread, but apparently I asked Michael, the, the executive chef, and he said no, it's got to last all over Christmas. Back on the 14th deck of the ship, Champagne. after a slow start, the exclusive Regent Suite Christmas party is finally getting going. If you want, we can, we can switch the canopies to pass it on. And Ronnie's team of butlers are stepping up to the task. So it's going to be like around 18 guests here. So we're going to have more butlers coming around, more hot appetizers, and we have a lot of uh, requests, like one after the another. It's like, what's next? What, what's next? This way, please. Edward, the pianist, has also arrived. This is all yours for this evening. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> Exclusively made for the region suite, so yeah. maybe you should try. 
Dude, I've played in some really nice places, but this, uh, I think this tops them all. I... But the singing cruise director is busy elsewhere on the ship. Mm. Oh. Warming up. Oh. Mm. I need a towel, really, otherwise I'm spraying the place. Mm. Yeah, I'm a bit nervous. I'll probably choke on my own breath anyway and hit a few bum notes knowing me, but it'll all be in the spirit of that small but expensive venue. John is finally on his way. <laughs> Got the uh, Regent Sweet cocktail party with the uh, special song. I oh, wish me luck, I'm gonna go now. Bye. I want it to go right, obviously. It's the first time in the Regent Suite and first time singing around the Steinway piano. It's like the Green Mile. I'm a bit nervous. Oh, let's go in the posh doors. How thank are you? you? Oh, thank you for inviting <laughs> don't be, me. Don't be silly. Thank you. Oh, I love this room. Oh, it's me just, too. I don't get up in here very I often. I love everything about it. And I love your necklace as well. I just bought it. Oh my gosh. Here, it's Bellari. It's their, it's their biggest piece. That is the one, yeah. Uh -huh. That's amazing. I won the awards. Pretty, pretty. Uh, Absolutely yeah. stunning. Fit. Time for a bit of Dutch courage. I might have a little cheeky bit of uh, Cosmo, but only a week, only a week one. A week one? Yeah, a week. Will John be able to pull off a performance worthy of the Regent Suite? Let's do a bit of Jingle Bells, Ed. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do Jingle. Will you join in? All right. Come on. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Around the ship, guests enjoy a few final moments of festive opulence before thoughts turn to home. I'll be devastated when I go to step like, off this yeah, boat. <laughs> I agree with that. Bells on Bob Tilbury. We're saying goodbye temporarily to see some of the family, but we'll be back. Sure. We'll be back. We haven't put any decorations up at home before we come away. Imagine doing this every Christmas. But we have to mention the bad news. I have yet to see Santa Claus on this voyage. <laughs> Jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Success, it's a relief for John at the end of his Christmas at sea. But well, that's over actually. It was really good. I enjoyed it. I mean, it was festive, it was fun. Drinks were flowing. It was great. After traveling almost 2,000 miles through the Gulf of Mexico and around the Caribbean Sea, the Seven Seas Explorer is approaching its final stop back in Miami. For the guests, it's been a festive voyage like no other. We hope you had a fabulous holiday cruise with us. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, and a happy new year. And for some of the staff on board the world's most expensive cruise ship, it's time to return home to their loved ones. Take care, and Merry Christmas, everybody. And that is my job on the Explorer done. Christmas is done. Now I've got Christmas in Birmingham.